has managed only one field goal. They lead now the U.S. team, that is, 10 And the man was definitely committed, I think. What do you think, Mike? He had started to take off on his move ready before the defensive player jumped in. I think it was a good call. We're back live, and the fans littering the, fan, the court with the uh, paper fans that they were using to try and keep cool in this 90-some-odd degree heat here. And a very unhappy Soviet bench looking on. They are not going to play for the gold unless a minor miracle takes place. It's 127 to play, 83 for Yugoslavia, 76 for the Soviet Union, and this a major upset here in the 10th Men's World Basketball Championship. Cleaning off the degrees, the official trying to get order restored. Yugoslavia. They can run the clock out. Okay, now, if you're the, you're the 
the coach of the Soviet team, Bobby Knight. What are you going to tell your team to do with 26 and 9, 10 seconds, you trail by three? The Yugoslavians have shown that they're going to take the ball out of bounds. I just keep following on the inbounds pass and not use up any time and eventually think that we can pick off a pass. I would not put any defensive player on the man out of bounds. I'd drop him back and play five against four, looking to get the steal on every pass or commit the foul uh, immediately in the attempt to get the ball right away. Not intentional, however, though. No, not obviously yeah, because not you're intentional. Because you're in big trouble, right. not to make it intentional. Except for one thing, Bobby. The Russians don't, uh, the Soviets don't have the kind of personnel that can apply the kind of pressure that you would use. They get it at the hands of Drazen Petrovic, the best ball member. 24 seconds to play. He's taking up too much time for the Soviet good. Good ball movement. Foul being called against, I believe, Sabonis. That's what I mean. They don't have the kind of pressure that can you, the stop the uh, Yugoslavs from using up all the time. Head coach of the Soviet Union, Obukov, looking on. Sabonis with his fourth personal, 16 and 4, 10 seconds remaining in this game. Three-point lead for Yugoslavia. They'll look, they'll look for Drazen Petrovic more than likely, or his brother Alexander. The Yugoslavians do not have to shoot the ball. They led by nine, and the Soviets came back with two quick three-point plays. That's Dibatze with the ball. He shouldn't put it on the floor. They call a double dribble. There's a turnover. There's the pressure defense. They finally made Something good may happen for you. Well, we said it would take a miracle for the Soviets to pull this off. They are on the verge of that miracle. They trail by three. 11 seconds to play. Walters off of Sabonis. Three-pointer. Count it. We're tied. A last second three-point try. Overtime. What a finish. Big, big offensive play that time. We had talked about the hit go behind or outside handball. There it was for a three-point shot. That's the third time they've run that move for a three-pointer today. Possession, and that's what they all they needed. Back 
into the game, Alexander Petrovich, number five for the Soviet Union. And an obviously upset Radovic, number 10 for Yugoslavia. And a very dejected Chosic as he cannot believe what happened. international competition the penalty goes on into the overtime you do not get new fouls so that's why they have Sabonis at the free throw line Chituto with the rebound and yet another player hits the deck on that exchange Rick for coaches who have never played with the three-point shot it's such a different strategy the game is never over you always have a chance at the end it makes for much different coaching philosophy having the three-pointer three-point try counted for Petrovic and you go has tied the game at 88 29 for Drazen Petrovic 345 to play here in overtime from the Sports Palace in Madrid Sabonis Devante with the foul and Shutura has his jersey stretched on Sabonis to hit the deck foul right there by number six and there's Sabonis stretching the shirt of Shutura he'll be at the line he has 21 in the ball game. Third foul, as you saw, against the Devatse. Soviet Union by one. That tells the story. At least for the moment. On a dramatic comeback by the Soviet Union. And the second free throw this time was missed by Sabonis as he's only able to hit one of two for the second consecutive time. 3.30 to play, overtime. Jozan Petrovic just hit a three-pointer. Last possession. Shot clock goes down to 10. His brother Alexander for three. Shatona keeps it alive. Devante can't save it. The crowd definitely pulling for the Soviet Union here in Madrid. This game has completely changed. Just the emotional level. The crowd is into it now. Down the stretch and into the overtime. This game has been very exciting, Rick. Tinkaninko to Sabonis. Back to Sabonis. We're going to call a block on that play. Petronovic cannot believe the call, nor can head coach Chosic. Well, you think the referees kind of go along with the crowd, huh? Let's watch again. There is number eight. He's set. What well, do you think, Mike? Well, it's interesting. You have one official standing right on the baseline, as we'll see here coming into the picture. He says, no call. Everything's fine. He gives it the safe sign. The outside official from 20 feet away makes the call. The call goes in favor of the Soviet Union. Into the ball game now comes Arapovic, number 13. He replaces Petronovic. Sabonis with 22 points. Has converted one of two free throws the last two times for the Soviet Union. They have a lead of one. 89-88, 2.47 to play in overtime. And the one and one does not go down this time. As Sabonis not able to capitalize on these opportunities. His brother, Alexander. That's Shutura. Devatse, strong move, counts the basket. And perhaps that may be the basket to help him to feel a lot better about the double dribble. Nothing will make him feel better about that double dribble, Rick. There's the move again. He just hoped they win the game so that uh, he didn't have to make him lose the game, but he'll never forget that one. The foul goes against Tikoninko. And so Debatze with the chance to give the Yugoslavian team a two-point lead. Now he has something else to think about, as will be the Soviet ball. They trail by one. 2.20 left to play now here in overtime. The winner of this game plays the United States for the gold medal on Sunday night. Soviet Union, if you just joined us, came from nine down with a minute to play to tie the ball game and send it to overtime. They did it with three three-pointers. Pinkoninko. Big rebound for Devatse. 
The loser plays for the bronze medal Saturday night. The foul against Souk, number five. Now is he going to shoot the one and one? Let's see one, what the decision is. One thing that I think here uh, about the loss of possession at the end of the game, Yugoslavia, if they're going to take the ball out of bounds on the free throws, has to get their five best ball handlers in the game, and they didn't have them. They had the big kid in there, and there was no need for that when they're taking the ball out of bounds. Very good point, as Drazen Petrovic misses the free throw. He has been very inefficient for the free for, throw line. Two for seven. He's two for seven now, Bill, exactly right. And he was an 84% free throw shooter coming into this ball game for this tournament. Some very costly misses by two key players, Sabonis and Petrovic. Sabonis is fouled by Debatze from the back. He'll get the one-and-one -one opportunity again with 135 to play. Four you think fouls. he'll make these two, Rick? Debatze. I tell you, Bill, the way he's shooting, I don't know. That's five fouls on... Uh... Now they say, right, five fouls on Debatze. He goes out. Number 10 comes in. And we'll watch six again with the foul right over the back. Very obvious, silly foul on the part of the defensive player who already had given up position, had no chance on that one. So Sabonis, with three misses in the last five attempts, hits the big one and ties it at 90. 135 to play. We're in overtime here from the Sports Palace in Madrid. Soviet Union. Hitting three three-pointers in the last minute to tie this game and send it to overtime. Sabonis with 25 gives the Soviets the lead. One minute and 30 seconds left to play. I don't think there's much question where the ball's going to go right now. It's just a question of how they're going to get it into Drazen's hands. Alexander Petrovic challenges the big man. This is the shot as Sabonis made him think about it. A minute 15 to play. One minute. Soviet Union, 91. Yugoslavia, 90. We're in overtime. Five on the shot clock. Three-pointer. Walter Arapovic with a big rebound for the Yugoslavians. 45 seconds to play. They trail by one terrible pass. Interception, Sabonis. Good play. What a, what a poor pass. decision with the basketball. He tried to thread a needle through the middle of four defenders. No need to do that. That was Alexander Petrovic trying to get into his brother Drajan. They still have time because there is a 11-second differential between the game clock and shot clock. Shot clock at 10, game clock now is down to 19. Kosic is telling him, don't foul. Sabonis misses. Shatura had the rebound, and away with it is Tarakanov. Nine seconds. The Soviet Union may pull it off.
Night eclipses that for excitement. It very well may. I'm going to put that on cassette and play it back at my house over and over. There may have been a team make a comeback like that, but I don't recall ever seeing one come back nine points in 46 seconds. And Nick Charles, one of the reasons you don't see that sort of thing happen in American basketball very often, although it probably has happened somewhere, mm -hmm. is that there's no option on the fouling situation late in the game as there is in international rules and there would have been a free throw made by Yugoslavia somewhere had they had to take free throws That's but right. of course they had the option to take the ball out of bounds and it proved to be the wrong option for them well positively spellbounding there's no question about it now I think the interesting thing is looking ahead yeah. to the big one Sunday the, uh, will the Soviets come in having uh, just grazing the sky there will they be flat after this how do you possibly top it it's easy to get up for the United States, I'm sure. And Bob, again, the U.S. team looking for that identity for so long. Now I think they found it, and the stamp is obviously defense. They're playing a suffocating kind of defense. And how do you see the matchup? Well, first of all, the Soviet Union team has changed. They are a fast break. They are high-scoring offensive machine with good ball handlers. That's not like Soviet Union teams prior to this. I think there are two or three questions that I have. How will David Robinson play? Sometimes he's great, sometimes he's not great. Very hot and cold. How will Arvita Sabonis play? He's the same way. He's hot and cold. Those two big men will determine something. Tyrone Bogues, the 5'3 guard from Wake Forest, has just created nightmares for the European 6'5", 6'6 guards. They don't know how to handle a 5'3", inch ball-hawking, ball-stealing guard like Tyrone Bogues. Uh, Valdis Valters is the point guard for the Soviet right. Union. He's 6'5 and a half. He is not all that agile, although he runs the floor pretty well. I think he'll have problems with Bogues. And the only other thing that I would say is the United States is going to miss Steve Kerr. He injured his knee. Uh, he's been taken back to the United States for further examination. He's the long-range bomber. Kenny Smith has not been shooting well the last few yeah. games. That, that's the way I see it. Those will be the questions that have to be answered. Good analysis. I think the, the depth at guard is a question, very definitely. And also, I think uh, what the U.S. has to exploit is their quickness. You mentioned uh, mm -hmm. the Soviets do like to run, but I don't think, uh, as Bob Knight said, they have the overall quickness defensively to cover the floor. So the U.S. has to do a masterful job designing their offense, try to run it every year, but stretch that defense. And you've got to do that by hitting those three-pointers. And once again, uh, without Kerr, it's going to be difficult, but we'll see. That's what makes it dramatic. We've been, we, we can't talk about this all that much longer, but I could talk about it another hour. The 1982 championship game, Everybody. United States-Soviet Union, Glenn Doc Rivers, now with the Hawks, missed at the buzzer, and the Soviet Union won 95-94. And the big point, again, is uh, unlike a lot of Olympic competition, the World Basketball Championships are the most important thing on earth to other countries. It isn't winning an Olympic gold medal, mm -hmm. it's winning the world title. So as far as teams being pumped and ready to fire, we got the matchup we wanted, I know that. Sunday night, prime time. We'll have the coverage for you in a moment. We're going to